Hi, this is Everett, Everett's Watercolors. Welcome to my classroom. And we're broadcasting uh, on YouTube and Facebook. And also have broadcast out to uh, on LinkedIn. And welcome to all you uh, in the U.S. and all those around the world. I hope to have a lot of viewers here today. And I'm in the video studio with my wife, Gloria. Welcome, everyone. And uh, what I was going to start out today is uh, it's a little bit different today. I'm, I'm going to do, do a demonstration. But I'm I'm working basically I'm working I'm working on a on a project with acrylics, and uh, I've been, I used acrylics years ago, and I uh, still have my acrylic set and so forth. So I've been I've been working around with those uh, this week, and uh, so I thought I'd pass on some information about acrylics and also uh, wet media because wet uh, acrylic is a wet media just like watercolor, it just it just has a different base to it. Uh, so I'm going to talk about differences there, but also uh, the reason why we're doing watercolor. Uh, I want to do a color study uh, along with the acrylics so I can prepare for uh, my acrylic uh, project. And I'm going to, not going to talk about the project quite yet. Uh, you'll see the painting I'm doing. You'll see the, the subject matter. But uh, so be a little surprised about where I'm going to paint it. So if, if you want to put something in the comments about what you think or where you think I'm going to paint it, uh, that'd be interesting. And then uh, next week, uh, I'll show you the end results. And uh, we'll go over uh, how the acrylic project come along. So I'm going to go over to my painting table, and uh, and uh, let me get started. And I'll turn the chat room on. Okay, the chat room's on. Let me turn my light overhead. Okay, ready to go. Okay, this is my uh, reference photograph, and you can see it's a it's a landscape, classic landscape. Uh, but it's really the beautiful part about this is the sunrise, the sunrise colors, and it's got a long mountain, a background mountain range. It has the middle ground mountains in here, and a little tree line, and a little some flowers and grass here in the foreground. So that's the subject matter that I want to. Uh, work on today, but I'm going to do a color study in watercolor because I am going to paint it in acrylics, but uh, I want to do a little color study using watercolors, which is a pretty good thing to do. So uh, let's go over my material. Uh, a big shout out to uh, Holbein. Uh, they, uh, they provide a lot of my material today, and uh, we'll, we'll, I hope some of those are watching me on, me on uh, YouTube or Facebook. So let me show you my setup here. On my palette, I have, uh, I'm actually, I'm going to go with a basic palette today. I'm going to use uh, lemon yellow, yellow lemon, which is down here in the left corner of my palette. Uh, ultramarine blue, which is at the top. And uh, pyro red, which is here in the center. And I'll use a little bit of Payne's gray. Over here, I got to use it in the right corner over here. Payne's gray, and a little bit of uh, Chinese. I still have it here in a tube, a little, a little tube of uh, Chinese white. And I'll go over why I'm using those colors uh, today. Uh, these are Holbein watercolor artist watercolor paints, uh, and they're very good. They're very uh, long lasting and high brilliance, high intensity. So uh, they're they're my favorite watercolors. Uh, I'm going to be using uh, Gemini watercolor paper, 140 pound, cold press. And uh, on my brushes today, because I'm going to be doing a lot of washes, uh, I'm going to use a soft hair brush today. And basically, uh, silver brush, I have uh, a two and a half inch hake, hake brush. And I'm going to use a three quarter inch flat and uh, probably the half inch flat. Those are natural hair. And, uh, and uh, the, uh, this designer round brush, which is a number eight round brush. Okay. Now, uh, I'll also be using a Holbein. I got a Holbein one inch, a half inch, a three quarter inch uh, flat round synthetic brush. And a number eight round, number eight round synthetic brush. Now, all these products I have here, I use in my art and I use them in my studio. And uh, they're also available on my website. Uh, www.everettswatercolors.com okay. 
It's Matt Hopper of Holbein said, great color selection, Everett. Well, wonderful. Hi, Matt. Good to see you. Thank you very much for uh, your exploration there. Uh, I use a lot of other colors, but I'm going to use a limited palette today, and there's a reason for that. Uh, when I when I do a sunrise colors, if I go to the color wheel, and I love to go to the color wheel, always do. Uh, if I'm going to paint a sunrise, I'm going to have all kinds of colors. I'm going to have uh, yellow, I'm going to have oranges, and I'm going to have purples. But all I have to do is mix the colors. If I go with my yellow, my yellow lemon, and I mix it in with the red, I'm going to get the oranges. I'm going to get the oranges, okay, just by mixing those two colors. So those two colors take care of that. If I want to mix uh, a purple, I can take my uh, my blue, which is uh, ultramarine, which is in this area, and I can mix that with the red, and I'll get a I'll get a violet. So that'll be my violet color right here. And then for the trees and foreground here with the grass, I just take the uh, the lemon yellow and mix it in with the the blue, the ultramarine blue, and I get a nice mixture of greens. So I only the only three colors I do now. I'm adding a little bit of uh, Payne's gray. That what that does it dulls down the color a little bit. It takes off uh, when you take the colors out of the tube. For example, the reds or the blues, uh, the pure color is a little bit sweet, which means it's a little bit too sharp. So I tone it down just a little bit with the Payne's gray just to take off that colorful color colorful edge. I don't want a real bright color. And then uh, also the Chinese white. If I want to lighten a color up, of course in watercolor I just add water that lightens the color. But I can also add a little bit of Chinese white, and that will tone it down, give me a little tint. So I can get a tint by using uh, Chinese white or adding water, or I can get a, a darker shade by adding a little more pigment, or I can add a touch of uh, Payne's Gray to give me a darker shade. And I'll be doing a little bit of that today, just for just to modify some of the colors. Okay. Um, Goes over all my my products here I'm using and let's see here. Uh, this is my I took the I took the painting here I took the the subject matter the I call it the the sunrise and the mountain sunrise and mountain and that's what I'm calling the painting. Uh, and I did I did a little uh, a little design sketch here and it's basically the same elements here I got the the background mountains with the sunrise coming over over the mountain. And I've got this middle ground here with the large dark mountains, and I've got the foreground with some trees and grass down here at the bottom. So this is my design plan based on the the photograph. Okay. So I took the photograph and the and the design plan, and I transferred that to my watercolor paper. 140 pound. This is a quarter sheet. This measures 15 by 11, 15 inches wide by 11 inches tall uh, size. This is quarter inch quarter sheet of uh, Regular, this is 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. So, what I'm going to do now is uh, start out with the first wash. And before I do a little preparation here, uh, I'm going to start with the sky. And I'm going to use basically these two brushes here. I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to use the big hake. This hake is a nice soft, soft, this is a soft brush also. And I use water. Just plain water, and I'm going to wet down the, I'm going to wet down the sky. I'm going to do a little wet on wet technique. Uh, wetting the sky makes it easier for the uh, water to spread and to uh, flow. It also make it easier to blend because I want to blend those colors together. As I mentioned before in the color wheel, if I want to make a, if I want to make a sunset, I'm going to need uh, violets with the blue and red, and I'm going to make the uh, orange out of the red and, and yellow. So they'll blend down the paper very nicely. So I'm going to make the sky up here, just just a, just above the mountain top here. It's nice and wet. I'll pick up the excess moisture. I don't want to have it too wet, but I want to have it nice and wet so the paint will flow. Okay. So this hay brush with lots of water in it, uh, it's, it's a soft it's a soft brush, so it, it spreads the water very nicely. I'll put that aside. That's all I need that for now. Now the uh, the silver brush has a has a, a, a lot of hair, and this is a natural hair. This is, this is a red sable, which has a lot of. It's a natural hair brush, and it holds a lot of water. Now compare that with my uh, with my Holbein uh, three quarter inch brush. Uh, this has 
It has a little stiffer, stiffer bristle. It's wonderful for painting, but uh, today I'm going to use a lot of flow. So I'm going to use, I want a nice steady flow of paint. So I'm going to use the natural airbrush. And I could get almost the same job with the, with the, net, with the synthetic, but I'm going to use the natural hair today. I use them interchangeably. So I'm going to mix up uh, some colors here. First, I'll start out with the, the light color. I'm going to start out with the lemon yellow. And I'm going to mix up, uh, now in watercolor, it's trans, I'm going to do it transparent, which means uh, you can see, if I'm doing a sunrise, I'm thinking about the, the color of the sky and the, and the light. I'm really painting the light. And I'm going to start with the sunlight and go from there. The sunlight will be coming across the mountain. So the paper is still damp from the, the water I put on there. Now I'm going to go across the mountain here uh, with that first wash. And you can see it'll be tra pretty transparent. And it's transparent because I can still see the white paper below. And that'll give me the glow of the, of the sun coming through coming through the sky. Coming from the coming from the, through the air. So I'm gonna start with I'll go here across here a couple times. Now the thing about watercolor that we always already remember is it will dry 30 to 40 percent lighter. So you've got to put it down a little bit stronger than you think you need because if you don't put it down strong enough, it's going to fade uh, fade away to nothing. So I'm putting a little more pigment in there just to give it a nice nice layer of yellow paper on the paper. Okay, next I'm going to pick up. I wash out the brush. I'm going to change paint. So I'm going to paint, wash out the brush. And I'm going to pick up some of that uh, pyro red. Now, pyro red is a, a beautiful color. I use it's really one of my primary red, along with uh, alizarin crimson. But I use the pyro red because it's a little brighter. And with this sky, I've got a pretty bright red. So I decided to use pyro red today. So right here, I'm going to, now. I'm going to start just above that yellow color, and then I'm going to come down with another another. Uh, Another brush load of red. I may have to go back and put a little more yellow in there because I want I want them to blend. Again, I'm checking my value because I know it's going to be I know it's going to dry lighter, so I got to put more pigment in there. I got to put more pigment because I know it's going to I know it's going to dry lighter. So in watercolor, I always have to think about that. Okay, now before it gets too dry, make sure my pick up some uh, tissue here, check my brush. I'm going to go ahead and put, pick up a little more yellow now. And I'm going to blend that in with that red just a little bit, just a touch of red. I'm going to make, now you'll see the orange show up. And I really don't need any more, I don't need any more water in the brush because there's plenty of water on the paper. And, uh, I got a mixture and I got water also in the palette, so I really don't want to add too much extra water to my my brush. I'll go back now and pick up a little more of that red. I want to blend some more. Okay, now I'm going to pick up a little bit of ultramarine blue, and it'll be about a, a medium value, a little medium color. I don't want to get. I'll start a little bit. I'll add a little more to it as I get going here, but I'll start out with like a medium. A medium value of blue, it's a dark color. And I'll go over here at the top. And that's that'll be the sky color coming down. And start overlapping that red, and you'll see the purple start to appear. Okay. And I gotta remember again, it's gonna dry lighter, so I'm gonna put it have to put in a little more pigment. So I'm picking up another paint load. Now with this natural hair brush, I'm able to really load up, really load up the paint, really load it up. Okay, now I'm going to wash out my brush. I'm going to wash out my brush again. I have two buckets of water, one for rinsing and then one for clean water. So right now I'm going into the rinse bucket, rinsing out the brush. 
Now I'm gonna I'm gonna rinse the brush and I'm gonna take a lot of the water out of the brush. I don't want I don't want too much water in my brush. Now I'm gonna pick up a little more red out of the palette. And I wanna go across one more time up here. I wanna get some more purple going. So I'm gonna put that red right into that blue to get that purple mixture. Right up here. I'm going to bring that red down a little bit more. I'm going to do one more pass with the yellow. I need a little more yellow up in there because I want this sky to really be light. Uh, I'm going to throw that sunrise, so I'm going to put a little more. And uh, I'm watching the water. A little bit of water dripped off my brush. So it's uh, it's going. To, if I don't pick that up right there, and all I do is blend it, blend it out. If I don't pick that up, it's going to cause a, uh, cause a blossom which means there's more water up there in one spot than another, and it's going to start running off to the side. Uh, yeah, I need to pick up some more paint. I'm going to correct that a little bit. I got more paint in there. So I'll pick up more blue. So I'm going to dress up the stride. Now the paint is, the paper is still wet, so I'm able to blend. I'm able to blend those colors very nicely now. Uh, clean off my brush. This is, this is the most important part of the painting, is the uh, gradual, the gradient wash of these three colors, and sometimes uh, it, I will also, and some sometimes when I paint this area for the sky, I'll use three different brushes, one one brush for each color. But that gets a little bit confusing. You forget which brush you have, <laughs> which just happens to which happens to everybody. As long as that paint, as long as that paint is still wet as long as that paper is still wet you can still you can still play with the paint a little bit but once sooner or later you got to get out of there let me pick up a little more yellow one more time on it one more pass on the yellow i'm not satisfied with that with that color yet so that's why uh, uh actually this is actually uh, i shouldn't be so uh technical yet because uh, this is really a color study i'm really just testing out colors and I'm just playing with what colors I'm going to use in uh, my final painting. So this is really a color study. I'm really going into a lot more detail here uh, than I need to do. Now what I'm doing, I'm, I'm picking up the edges now with a tissue. And what that does, I'm taking the moisture off the edges so it doesn't run into the painting, into the paper. Because when it runs into the paper, it'll cause uh, a it'll cause a bloom or a blossom. There, that's a nice clean mix right there. Okay. All right. Okay, it looks kind of striped across there, but this I've got the board tilted at about a 20 degree angle up this way, so the paint's going to gradually, it's still going to fall down. It's going to come down uh, and, and blend together here at the bottom. So that's that's right now. I'm going to leave that alone for a while. I'm gonna, now I'm going to dry that out. So I'm going to turn on the dryer and I'm going to go ahead and, and dry it down. Now I use the uh, a wet on wet wash, a graded wash with blue, red, and yellow, which will give me a nice transition for a sunrise. Now I'm going to use these same colors and different mixtures though for the rest of the painting. So uh, we're going to get a little exercise today in uh, color mixing, and also. This will also, because I'm using these three colors, it will also give us an, a color harmony because if I use the same colors in the sky and the colors are related to what I'm going to do in the landscape at the bottom, then we'll have a color coordinated homogeneous painting. So that's another thing I think about is, is what colors I'm using and what mixtures will make, make a nice combination of colors. And using primaries, you can mix almost you can mix almost any color you want. You got a good set of primaries. You can see now that paint is drying much lighter now as it dries out. I'm going to test my hand here. That's pretty good. Okay. All right. Now you know checking against the photograph. I've got the uh, we got an orange 
not quite enough orange in there, but for right now, I know what I need to do on the final painting, but right now, just getting the color mixtures I have, okay? Uh, you know, in, in our, in our, um, in our supply here at Everett's Watercolors, you know, I have 108 colors of Holbein. Holbein Watercolors comes with 100, 108 colors, and uh, you can pick almost any color you want and, and make any combination. And the uh, uh, difference between the colors, of course, some are more transparent than others, uh, some of them are uh, brighter than others, but the combinations are beautiful. And I've been investigating different color combinations all along, but today I just want to use the basic ones. But there's 108 colors to choose from. It really can become a, quite a study to uh, analyze what colors are, are you can use. All right, now I'm going to use now the distant hills. I'm going to take a... a if you'll, notice, if you'll notice here in the photograph, there's a little bit of blue here and a little bit of violet back in here. So there's violet here and there's blue along here. So that's what I'm going to follow. So I'm going to use my uh, ultramarine blue. And I'm going to mix that with the uh, pyro red. And you can see that it comes out with a beautiful. A beautiful violet. Pyro red is very strong. And pick up a little bit of that uh, ultramarine blue. Bring that in, pick up a little more paint. And you can see the mixture there and get a nice bluish purple. So the more blue I put in there, the, the bluer it's going to get. And the more red I put in there, the redder it's going to get. So that, that's the combination you work with. So I kind of want I want I want a medium a medium value in there medium color I want to have about fifty percent blue fifty percent red and leaning a little bit toward the blue side so I'll add a little more blue to that pigment just a little more blue now I'm going to come in here now I'm going to start painting in this uh, now I'm also going to think about the value I'm going to think about the value because that uh, this is a uh, No, this is this is like a medium. It's like a medium value. It's not dark, not dark dark, but it's a medium value. So there's there's the blue. These are the back back lying mountains range. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more blue in that. A little more blue, not too much, because I want to keep I want to keep that same value. I want to keep that same value. I don't want to get too too dark yet. The dark, the dark mountains will come in later. Okay, that's uh, that's about where I'll start from. As uh, the value is good. That's a good value. It's not too dark. It's like a middle value, and I'm going to just make that range there going up. I'm going to move around the. Where the sun is, so I got more. I got more blue over here on this side. More blue here. And then it's going to be have a little more violet over here on this side, a little more violet because it's closer. The sun is the sun is coming up over this section, so it'll have a little more a little more red tone into it. So I'm going to just put a little more violet in here. So I'm adding a little more mixture of a little more red on this section over here because it's going to it has that red reddish part of the sky coming across that that sunlight coming across this part of the mountain. So this side is going to have a little more purple glow in on this on this side of the uh, painting over here. So blue over here and be more red on this side. So I noticed that in the photograph, and I'm I'm kind of following. I may maybe when I do the final painting, uh, it won't make much difference anyway. But I'm trying to again, I'm kind of testing different things, different co colors. I'm testing what colors I want to use. Uh, of course, it can always change. Whatever I can always change as long as I go along. Okay. All right, I'll lay this brush down. Now I've got a small section 
So I'm gonna use a smaller brush. This is the half this is the half inch uh, flat. And I'm gonna use a little more blue now. A little more blue. Very light blue. And that's gonna be this section over here. There's a light section. It's further back. It's behind this this mountain range here, but there's a third mountain range way off in the background. And I'm gonna make that very light. And just have a hint of blue. Just a little bit of blue color. It'll be much. The really the, the only difference here is the value. The colors are very pretty close. Uh, they got a little bit of blue, a little bit of violet in it. But yeah, the point is, it's the value because this 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 part of the landscape it goes way back. This is a mountain mountain range way behind. So it's going to be have a lighter value. Uh, this this is a little, a little bit of a uh, uh, linear perspective here also in this lesson here. Linear perspective, as if we go further back into the landscape, uh, the colors get lighter. And they tend to be a little bit cooler. So a little more blue there in the back, way off in the background, makes this a more believable uh, painting as far as perspective. So that, that area there, Hey, let me uh, let me go over and read here. It says, uh, "Oh, uh, Hobine, uh, great stuff, ever. Thanks for making our water car look so good." <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> the uh, well, as, as a story, as a, as, I was going to add some more stories as I go along because this this is very interesting. I I started when I started painting probably 30 years ago. I can't remember the time now. Right in the middle of my, 1990, sometime. When I started painting, I retired from the Marine Corps, and I, I decided to find a hobby that I would want to take for the rest of my life. And uh, I said, I've always wanted to paint. And uh, so I started out painting way off in the, I don't know, early, middle, oh, I can't remember the exact dates now. I could look it up, but it's, it's generally the middle of nine, 1995, 1994, someplace along there. And I started out with acrylics. Uh, I had a, I had a wonderful mother-in-law who had me was painting. She was a painter, and then I said, "Well, I've always wanted to paint." Well, she went and bought me a starter set and said, "Here, go paint." So that's how I got started. And uh, I started out I started out with uh, with acrylics, and uh, I learned from a, my first instructor. And uh, we were living in Texas, then, but I had a, I went and took classes right away to find out how to do this stuff, and. Uh, he was a watercolor painter, but he taught me how I could water down the, the acrylics to make it look like watercolor. And I started painting that way. And you can see here, watercolors, uh, and I, then I, I guess about uh, five or six years later, I, I because he was a watercolorist and I liked, what, liked his work, uh, I transferred over to using watercolors. And then when I got back here, I found a, I found a hole buying paints and the brushes and everything. So, uh, you know, that's a long story short. Uh, that's how I transgress. So I've been working with watercolors now for uh, a good 20, 25 years. So let's see. Um, okay, I've got that. Now the next layer, I want to get a little bit darker. So I'm going to go back to the bigger brush. This small brush is okay for a small. Use a small brush to do the job. I want a small area, so that's where I finished off this brush. I'll put that away. Go back to the bigger brush. Now I'm going to get a little bit, a uh, little bit darker. I'm going to go over here into the middle ground now. This is the uh, the middle ground. I'm going to put a little bit of blue and violet, but it's going to be darker. I'm going to use the same, I'm going to use the same color mix, but a little more paint, a little more pigment. So a little, a little alizarin crimson, and uh, I like the alizarin crimson because it, uh, alizarin crimson is uh, alizarin crimson. Oh, got the wrong color. I'm using ultramarine blue. That's kind of a private joke we have here in the studio that uh, I have a hard time pronouncing that name, but I'm working on it. I've been working on it for 15 years. Still having a good time with alizarin crimson, but I don't, I'm not using that today. I'm using pyro red. So I'm mixing a little bit stronger pigment now because I'm going to go darker. Okay, so I'm adding a little bit, so it's going to be a darker mix. Uh, primarily, it's going to be a violet. 
and this 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 range here now you can see now here's the foreground there's the middle ground middle ground now these mountains are the sun is behind these mountains so they're going to be showed they're in shadow and i'm coming along with this nice sharp edge of this brush And I like to mix. I like to mix colors. I don't like to use the same color, so I like to put a little bit of that red in there uh, to give a little bit of a, a little bit of color change. So I go. I go with the violet for a while, then I'll put in a little bit of a uh, little bit of violet here because the sun is coming across that mountain here, that, that mountain range, and it's going to pick up some color. It's going to pick up some reds, some oranges. Uh, you can use almost any color you want. It doesn't really. It's the value that counts. The colors are nice. You can have you, colors are what you want to do practice with, but it's what, what really makes a painting work is the proper value, the lights and darks, the midtones. That's what makes a painting work. Look at that contrast right here now with this this section over here with that nice light sky hitting this dark mountain. Now I'll start adding a little more of the blue now, going back behind into the shadow area. So I'm going to put in, now I'm going to put in some of the, uh, uh, and I'm going to leave some room here for some of those trees. Now I'm going to come back in with lighter color here for the trees. So if I put it too much, too much dark in there, you won't see the light. So I'll leave a little room here for some tree, just extra trees I put in there. So in watercolor, uh, another thing I think about is uh, saving some white areas for some objects. For example, I know I'm going to put a lighter color in here, so I'm going to paint around a little bit of that so I can put that lighter color in. Otherwise, I'll lose it. Uh, I've used masking material. I, I have masked out areas, but I don't use masking fluid unless it's really a critical spot that I want to save for a, a, a special reason. And that's, that's good for uh, masking and things like that. But this, I, I can just avoid putting that color there just by going around because I know I'm going to put some lighter colors there with the trees and so forth. Okay, pick up a little more of that blue. I'm going to go back in here. Uh, this little little hill mass goes up and down. There's another tree over here. I want to save some white area. So I'm, painting, I'm doing some negative painting too. I'm doing some uh, I'm painting around some of these objects and leaving some space. Then I'm going to come back in and put in more color, different color. Because that negative space is going to be a tree or a bush or something. So I want to keep that out of there. Okay, now as I come over here, I'm going to put in that same dark mix. Now here I'll pick up a little more. Now on this side of the painting, I think it's a little bit darker. Uh, and I'll put a little more blue over here. So here I have more red here. I'm going to put more blue. So I'm kind of playing around. Now you notice here. Gotta keep the this is dry now. I'm working wet on dry now, so I gotta put a little bit more water in my brush to have the paint flow. When I started out with the sky, it was wet on wet, so a lot of the what a lot of the uh, the flow came from the water on the paper. It just flowed naturally because it was already wet. Uh, but as I come forward. I come forward now. I want to uh, now. I got to watch out for a little more trees and bushes over here. I'll leave some, leave some white paper. I keep forgetting this is the color study. I, I really when I get working on a painting, I, I like to go. I'm really gung ho here, just putting in a lot of details. That I really don't have to worry about because I'm really just trying to capture uh, the colors and the values, and I'm just practicing the color harmony. The color harmony, I'm using blue here, which I got blue in the sky and red, I got the purples. That harmonizes with the red and the blue. So the harmony here is automatic with the, the colors I'm mixing. I'm using the same colors in the sky as I'm using here on the landscape. So color harmony is a very important thing in painting. Uh, so that's another thing I'm practicing here. I'm working on the, the color harmony. So I'm doing, I'm working out a lot of details here uh in this exercise for my final project uh working out the colors working out the the, the really the values 
and also uh, deciding uh, how dark I'm going to go someplace, maybe and not just the color, but how what the value, how dark I'm going to go, where all the lights are, and so forth. Okay. All right. Uh, I think what I'll do is I'm going to dry that section there. So I, what I did now is I, for the middle ground here, I started putting in the darker values. And I used the same color mixes, the ultramarine blue and the myron red over here, giving a strong, strong violet look. A very dark value, very dark value. So this is shadow. The sun is coming up over the mountaintop and it's shining in front of us. So we have a shadow pattern. And over here, I put a little more blue on this side. Same color mix of violet, but I made a little more blue violet. So just by putting a little more blue, I got a blue violet over here. So I get a little change in color. And I try to keep the value about the same. Keep the value. Keep the value about the same. It's a it's a it's a, a dark value, but uh, a different, just a slightly different color. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another mixture. I'm going to start putting some trees in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up uh, a little bit of green. Now, if you remember the color wheel, it's here somewhere. You're mixing the blue and yellow together, and we can get green. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take some of this uh, lemon yellow down here in the corner, make a nice big puddle. Because I know when I mix when I mix a dark color with it, uh, it's going to take over. So I need a lot more light color. In this case, yellow. If I'm going to mix a dark color with it. So the ratio here is about two to one because I need more light value here because it's going to it's going to be taken over with the darker color. I can wash out to brush that out a little bit. Don't want too much water in the brush. Pick up some of that ultramarine blue. Now as I come in, that ultramarine blue, you can see the color mixture now becoming green. That's what I want. I want a nice green mixture. And the more blue I put in there, the darker the color will be. So I'll make a variation. I'll make dark green, light green, so I can get a mixture here. Take a little bit of, take a little bit of the paint out of there, pick up some more yellow. A little variation. I go a light, a light and a light and a middle color green, and that's fine. Okay, so I'm going to go in and get, I'll use a color, a lighter color first, a little more yellow in there. And I'm going to go in here now and put in some of these trees. Now these are just ever, these are evergreen trees here in the fore, these are in the uh, middle ground and then moving into the foreground. So this is kind of, this tree right here is kind of bordering the foreground and the middle ground. It's just, it's really the middle ground. So we'll put this tree in here, put a little color, and we're going to put in some more color over here. Now this tree goes, I'm going to put this, now over this, is, now this here is another, another good principle here. I'm overlapping this shape to give this uh, landscape a little depth. So by overlapping the, overlapping the subject, like I overlap the mountains to give them a distance, I'm overlapping this tree now with the, with the landscape elements to also give it depth. So by making this tree go up and above that mountain range, it puts it in front and puts the mountain range behind. And that's what I want to do. That's what I want to have the, the mountain behind the tree. So that's why I put this I put a little more a little more height on this and give it an evergreen look, which will be spikes. Sharp branches coming off. Okay. And down here we'll do the same thing. This one here, now this one here overlaps that middle ground. This, over, this overlaps the middle ground uh, mountain. So it looks, so it'll give it some depth. This shows the foreground now uh, in front of that middle ground 
mountain. So linear perspective with the values are way up here in the mountain, but now we're talking about the uh, shapes and sizes here, like trees and so forth, and putting them in the right places. That also gives us a perspective, showing what's in front and what's behind. So all these things are important uh, when we're doing a painting to show the proper location and sizes and values of different elements in the landscape. And this is, these are just going to be bushes, low-lying trees, and so forth. So I'm just going to go ahead and put in the green in here. Uh, these are evergreen trees over here. I'm just going to put in a basic color. Basic color, and I'll add some accents on top of that, and uh, they'll look like trees. Right now, I'm just putting in some basic color. Really kind of blacking out those uh, the white paper. I'll leave a little bit of white paper showing. Uh, that shows a little bit of sparkle there. Which I, I do in a lot of my paintings, and leave the leave the white paper showing a little bit in places. Adds a little accent, at least a natural accent with the white paper, and uh, it also gives a little uniqueness to it. Uh, it's kind of like uh, my one of my signatures of painting is to leave white paper showing, and a lot of artists do that, but it's one of my favorite ways to paint is to leave white paper. Leave some of the white paper showing. Don't cover up everything. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Now I'm going to make a. Uh, I'm not finished. I'll let those dry on their own. But in the meantime, I'm going to mix up a, another color. And uh, I'll use my sponge here. To give me a little room here in the middle. Okay. So now I'm going to take use this using the same brush. I'm going to rinse out. The, I'll take the green color off. So I rinse it out of my right rinse bucket. Take out all the take out all the uh, color, and now I'm going to mix a little bit of the the yellow yellow lemon and the pyro red. And I want to get an orange color. I want to get an orange. So by mixing red and orange, red and uh, yellow together, I should, I'll get an orange. There it is. It's coming. It's coming out. And the ratio again, because red is so powerful. It's about a two to one ratio, uh, two, twice as much yellow as the red, as far as mixtures are concerned. So you have to put a lot more yellow in there to get the orange. Now, also because of the triad, when I when I mix uh, three colors together, a little bit of the blue now. And when I add a little bit of blue to that, I'm going to get a brown. And that's what I want. I want a kind of a brown, brownish color. And I just very, just a touch of blue on top of that. So now I'm using a triad. I'm using a red, yellow, and blue mixture now to get a to get a gray. And this is a warm gray. It's a brown, brownish color. And that's going to be my uh, this little road down here. And uh, I'm going to pick up a little bit. I'm going to take a smaller brush now. Introduce some of that. Uh, there's a whole bunch of paint. You know, the, the resistance here is not to go into the orange. The orange is what you, I don't want. I want a mixture. So the, it's a, the instinct is to, is to go into the palette and reach the color that you want, which is in this case orange. But I want the orange mixed in a little bit with a different uh, color to it. I want to have an earth tone. This one here is uh, is okay, but I don't want it too dark. Uh, this is a this is a, this is a dirt road or a gravel path or something here, in, among these trees. So this is just kind of a walkway, uh, a trail of some kind. So that's what I'm doing: I'm painting in a trail. And all these color changes, everything gives depth to the painting. It gives, uh, uh, I think, depth in the painting, especially in landscape. You want to show near and far, close and near. And you do that by value changes. You do it by color changes and by size changes. The size of different objects uh, in the landscape gives it a depth. 
Now I'll take the tissue. I want to pick up a little bit of that. I want to lighten that up just a little bit. And I may take a little, let me take that smaller brush now. And just put a little bit of, a little bit of yellow in there. Just, I want to lighten that up a little bit. And by lightening up, I'm adding a lighter color, which is yellow. And I can always go back and darken it later because, uh, you know, I can always layer on watercolor. Layering colors is easy to do. You just, once it dries, you can re wet it and layer it with another color or go in and dry with a dry brush to give it texture. Okay. All right, that's a big brush now. I'm going to go back to the greens again. Uh, mixing up a little bit of yellow. A little bit of all right. I've got some greens here in the foreground, so I'm going to go ahead and put in some greens here. Just a just a touch. Because I got a little, I've got a little bit of surprise here. I want to try out. I'm going to. Uh, I won't. I can do this. I can do this on the final pane, but this is just for watercolor, just for watercolor reasons. I'm going to go in here now with uh, my palette in the bottle uh, dot sprayer, uh, and this is available. This is all sold exclusively on Everest watercolors, and uh, this is a dot sprayer, and I've got green number one in here. So what I'm going to do is put a couple drops, a few, a few drops of green in here. This, this will just give me a little, a little green pattern. So this is this is not part of my final plan. This is just something I want to do here with the watercolor. Get some green in there, okay? And I'll take my smaller brush and I'll go in. I want to push that paint around just a little bit. So what I'm trying, what I'm doing here now, I'm I'm building a little texture. Just by putting in spray bottle, little drops here and there, a little bit of different brushwork. So I'm building up a little bit of texture here in the foreground, just to give a little bit of interest. And we'll wipe up the excess here on the bottom. And on top of that, also, I'm going to put in uh, this is Opera. This is a dust spray bottle. Uh, pile in the bottle, and it's got opera opera color paint in it. Shake it up. And I'm going to put some flowers down here. So I'm going to put in a little, little touch of red down here. So it'll give a little patch of color, a little splash of color. Yeah, I had a prime to pump. Yeah, prime to pump. And what I can do now is uh, pick up some of that. I'm taking a smaller brush now. I'm just taking some of that color now. Put a little, some more dashes of that red in there. So I'm taking opera right out of the, right out of the palette. Put a little bit of color here in the foreground. Okay. All right. Now I'm gonna go ahead and dry that. And we're gonna finish this off. Okay. I'm going to dry it now. Let it, uh... Now, one thing I can do here now, as I'm coming along here, I can take a dry brush. This is, this is a number eight round synthetic brush, but it doesn't matter what you use. And I can go into these puddles of paint. And I can pick up the excess moisture. That's what I'm doing right now, picking up excess moisture. And that'll help, that'll, uh, help uh, the drying process where it don't take so long to dry. So I'm just picking up. Especially down here at the bottom. So it really, it really didn't matter what was going on. I just wanted to show, just I just wanted to put a little color down here in the foreground, just to give a little interest. All right, I'm going to dry this up a little bit. I'll put a little texture here in the foreground, just a little bit of uh, brush stroke, a little bit of spray bottle.
Sometimes I leave that stuff dry naturally, but I like to use the hair dryer helps speed up the process a little bit. And uh, doesn't take that long. You see the shine going away with the water. Okay, now what I'm gonna do now, all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take some color here, which is right off the palette. And it kind of be like a gray. I'm just going to take this gray color here with just a little bit of blue in it. Make it, make it into a cool gray. So by mixing uh, mixing the colors together, the reds, the yellows, and the, and the uh, blues, you get the, the gray mix. So I'm mixing up a neutral, a neutral color now, just a neutral color. And it's a it's a very a very uh, eh, light value, but it's uh, not not too dark, not too light. So I'm going to go in there now and just go ahead and knock out some of these whites. So light gray. So I'm going to just cover up some of these white areas. Uh, tone down the uh, the whites. So it just kind of calms down. All, uh, I don't want the bright, too bright a color. I want some color up here in the foreground, but I didn't want a real, real strong bright color. Just a little splash of color. Uh, with the sun coming over the mountain, uh, be some flowers here in the foreground, uh, just to show off their color a little bit. That's about all. And that's kind of what I want. That's kind of the plan I want in my my project. I want to have a little color here in the foreground. Now the other, about the thing I'll tell you is Holbein number eight round, which is a nice, uh, nice round brush. It's a not, it's synthetic, but it's a very nice, nice way to add little touches. And up here in these trees, I can put a little bit of yellow, little, little yellow highlights. Because the, the sun is hitting those uh, branches coming over the mountain. So I'm going to put a little bit of highlights up here on this tree. So I'm showing off that the uh, light coming over the top. Maybe a little bit over here. Not everywhere, but just here and there. Okay. Okay, well that, that's really my color study. Now let me uh that's the watercolor. That's the watercolor approach right there. Uh it gives me a plan of what how I'm gonna put the colors in, what values I'm gonna use, uh the shapes and sizes. And so forth. Okay, and that pretty well, pretty well matches uh, uh, the photograph and so forth, which uh, there's a lot around here somewhere. Uh, but let me sh let me show you. What I want to show you now is uh, yeah. If we if we this is not this is not a finished painting, but at this at this point it would be a good good idea to put a mat board around it. And then take a look at uh, the results. There's a little bit. Uh, uh, I think it turned out real nice. I've got now to make the. Uh, I'll, I'll show you a little. I'll show you my, a little bit more I did on this because this was just a starting point. Uh, this is one I did. This is one I did earlier this week right here. I, I went ahead and put the little darker values on it, and I put the sun back here. It's a little bit of sun yellow. And then I got the, the, the rays of sun coming off of that. And I, I had a special technique. I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, and here's my picture. Okay. So from the picture, you can see the, the rays of sun, the rays of sun coming off the side there. And that's what I, that's what I did here in my practice. This was our practice one I did. <clears throat> showing, the, showing the sun rays coming off the off the sun. Now I'm going to, have to practice that because those, these are a little bit too stark. But what I what I found out was, uh, I I invented a little tool here. This is a piece of plastic that I had. A piece of plastic I used in the, uh, one of my frames, and I used a piece, an extra piece of plastic, and I taped on the back of it a couple of pieces of foam board to make it stand off. You can see the the two two layers, so I can lay this down. 
I can lay this down flat. And then I can mix up my color. Just a little bit of yellow. And I can go along here now. I can go along here and put in that ray of sun, sunlight, hitting the mountain. Okay. I'm gonna do it. It's like a dry brush. So I've got the. I'm using the. Um, I'm using the uh, number eight round Holbein brush, uh, which is, which is synthetic, but it makes a it makes a nice dry brush stroke because, it it's a it's got a stiffer it's got a stiffer bristle to it. So that's that's one way I, I developed the technique here for putting in the uh, sun rays. And let me show you one other thing here. I'm gonna play with it a little bit more. Uh, now here's the one I did in acrylics. Now look at the difference. The, the watercolor is transparent, so you see a lot of the paper coming through the paint. Okay, that's what you get in watercolor. That's why I kept talking about the uh, the, the paint's going to dry lighter when it dries. So it, it, I need to darken up the area. In watercolor, I'd darken up the top like I did in the, in the practice painting here. I made it darker here. But in uh, in acrylic, it's an opaque it's an opaque uh, medium so that uh, the paint uh, covers the paper very nicely, but also the light, the light doesn't come through. You can make it lighter by adding water to it and so forth. Uh, so this this is the acrylic version of this thing. Now I haven't worked with acrylics for quite a while, but let me let me show you a couple things I have here. Uh, I'm, uh, I used uh, a regular old bristle brush. Which you can buy at any any hardware store. I use that to, to wet down the paper, and I have some old uh, I have some old brushes here I use for acrylics. Okay, these are old, just a just a flat. It's like a flat a half a half uh, probably a half inch three quarter inch flat. It's like a quarter like a quarter. And it's a little filbert. Anyway, I use those for the painting, and they, they came I use pretty well. I got a couple other brushes I used also. But I, these are separate from my water. I do not mix watercolor and acrylics. They keep everything separate. A separate set of tools, a separate set of brushes, and everything. Now the paints I have, uh, these are the paints I had back. Well, I've had these for over 30 years. 30 years in these tubes. Uh, this is, uh, I, use, I use cadmium yellow medium here for the yellow. And really what I, I should have used would be the hands. Of, this, is a, this is a lighter. You can see the difference in the yellow. This is much this cadmium is much darker than this Hansen. Uh, it's light yellow light Hansen H A N S A, which is a which is all very equivalent to uh, lemon yellow. Uh, this is much this is much light. This is almost like the, uh, the yellow deep I have here, which would be the uh, cadmium yellow medium. Okay, for the red I used uh, cadmium red medium. I used that red here in the on the acrylic. For the blue I used uh, ultramarine blue. And I had uh, I had a tube of uh, Mars black, which I really didn't use much of. It used a touch up here on the in the mountain here a little bit. And then I have titanium titanium white, and I put that here in the in the in the sun up here coming across the sky. Okay. So those are the colors I use, and it turned out pretty nice. Now this is <laughs> this is kind of the way I'm going to go on the final project because I'm going to be I'm going to be painting in acrylics, so it's going to have a very Colorful, dark colors, bright colors, but and, and and bold colors. This is what I'm going to have. Now I'll probably lighten up the, uh, or darken up the, the. Now you know, on, on watercolor, you can always go back over. For example, I can go over this. This acrylic now is uh, is waterproof, so I can go over this now. This is watercolor paper. I painted this on paper, so I can go over this now and paint it with watercolors. And I don't have to, I don't have to worry about the paint, the paint mixing or or lifting or anything. That's the other, that's the advantage of putting down a, a layer of acrylic first, and then go over it with the watercolor or something later on. I can do that. So okay, so that's one of the advantages of acrylic. It, it's waterproof once it's down, and then you can go over it again with, with watercolors. Okay, that kind of concludes my little demonstration. And remember, this is just a color study. Get me started for next week. So let's go back to my uh, go back to my uh, main table, my main camera.
Okay, that was a that was a good exercise in uh, using watercolor again. I, I pointed out quite a few things there about uh, uh, the washes and also uh, about perspective and also sizing and so forth and also the mixtures. I think that was very important. The types of brushes you use. I use the natural hair because it flows across the. It, it's for washes. It, I, I had a big area to cover, so a natural hair covers it a little bit better. It does basically the same as a na uh, synthetics but uh, it holds more paint. The natural hair brush holds a little bit more paint, a little more pigment than the, than the synthetic brush does. So that's why I chose that to, as far as the demonstration. Uh, as far as the acrylics go, uh, I had a good time playing with that. It's, it's been like a, uh, a rehearsal because I haven't painted with it for so long, so I'm getting used to them again. And I'll sh next week I'll show you the final painting I've done, and I'll show you what project I was working on, and I'll show you the rest of my tools. I have a separate palette and a separate set of brushes and a separate procedure on how I, and in fact, a separate location. I don't mix, I try not to mix my acrylics with the watercolor uh, at all. Uh, one thing you can do is ruin your watercolor brush by putting acrylic paint in it. So I don't want to do that. Those brushes are too valuable to me to, uh, to mix media. So I have a separate, separate set of tools for acrylics and so forth. And I haven't been painting with acrylics that long, but uh, uh, I may get back into it, and, and you can mix them. You can mix a little bit here and there, like I showed you. You can paint in acrylics for certain areas, and then you can go in with watercolors uh, for other areas. And that's a, that'd be a mixed media, a very interesting technique to try and to play with. So uh, if you want to follow me for next week, subscribe to my YouTube channel and, and on Facebook. Uh, sign up. Uh, give me a like and give me a thumbs up. And, uh, and, and join my Facebook group, which I'll have also on uh, on the description in the, in the, of the video today i'll have the link to that to that link to facebook and also you on, on those looking on linkedin uh you can find me on my broadcast just sign just subscribe to my channel on this video and then you'll be notified of the video for next week which i'll go into the uh my final uh project using acrylic paint and i think you'll find that very interesting so watercolor came through today to give me a, a color study, and then next week I'll come in with a final painting with acrylic. So I'll be back uh, next Thursday at 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So happy 